Hey, great to see everybody. This is Friday, February 18th, and I'm John Zadar, and you're watching On Top and Hot. And today, that's just what we're going to do. We're going to look at stocks that were on the top and hot. And I base that on one, their percentage gain. That's hot. And how are they on top? by how many people are supporting it. So we're gonna be looking at stocks that had big gains today and had a lot of trades. I basically assimilate trades to people. If I see a stock with 500 trades, I figure there's gotta be more than five or 10 people there, right? There's a crowd. And where there's a crowd, you're gonna get price action. So we find those stocks and then we go find what made it run and dabble into some of the other information just to keep it all rounded out for us. And I do that here at the otcmarkets.com website. And it doesn't have anything to do with the information being current, though that is why I come here. The SEC and FINRA every day update the information on every OTC stock. So why go anywhere else? But the reason I'm here now is because of the way they correlate that information. Right here, under current market, I like the way they set this up. This is the most active stocks on the entire market, all 12,000 plus securities. And you can, depending on what you're after, see the stocks that had the most money thrown at them that day, or the most shares sold, which is what most people are looking at, or the most trades, which is what I'm looking at. I want to see how many people are trading the stock. Now they break this down by advancers and decliners, and of course, we're interested in the advancers. Now, you can just look at stocks over a dollar, over a nickel, or you can look at every stock on the OTC market, which is what I prefer to do, so I just click the all. Now this automatically comes up in the percentage change, highest at the top. So the trades are in a various orders. What I normally do is I will look for stocks down to 33% gains. You know, you got to draw a line somewhere and that have 50 trades or more. If there's not a lot, well, I'll go under 50 trades. You can find a lot of stocks that are just starting their surges with lower numbers. But again, you got to draw a line somewhere. So 50 trades, 33%, that's what we'll look at. Now, if I click this more button right there, now the page is dedicated just to advances. We're going to get a whole page of them. And I'm going to kick this more button out and it'll just keep kicking them down. We're at 80% now, 44. I'm going to go down to 33%, right? So we're going to be stopping right about here, right about there. And you see all these ones that have triple zeros, like there's 118 trades, but it's at triple zero four. We're not going to consider anything in the triple zeros, not because there's anything wrong with them. It's just they're more risky and they don't move as fast as we like to see stocks move. So we're not going to look at any triple zeros. We also will not be looking at any double diamonds, expert market stocks. Stocks pulled off the open market can't be bought or sold anyway, so why consider them? So we are looking for those 33%, we're already there, and anything over 50, per, uh, 50 trades that is over a triple zero. So 318, yeah, this one definitely constitutes SGTB did 4 million, 4.5 million shares today, 36% gains. Let's take a look at this one. So we're looking at Suggestion Box Inc. Uh, the relative volume today, 193,000 normally, <laughs> 4.5 million. Oh boy, I don't know, what is that? Like about 35 times her normal volume, a lot of extra volume. Share structure, not bad, we won't complain. It's just under 40 million shares. We can definitely work with that. They don't seem to be making any money. We're just breezing through this, folks. We're not zooming in on it. We just want to know the catalyst. Any disclosures today? Uh, November, I'm looking here, right? I can see the reports. There's nothing new, and I'm looking here, and that's 2014. So we're going to look at the news, hopefully see something for today. How about yesterday? 217. Suggestion Bach Inc. submits for corporation name, provide shareholders. Huh, let's see what this is about. Okay, uh, we are excited to move forward with new corporate name of Feel Better Labs, which directly reflects the direction operations of the company and its product. In the upcoming weeks, the company plans to finalize the merger with Zap Ver Inc. and intends that the name of Feel Better Labs Inc. becoming the name of the public corporation. There you go, folks. 
There you go. You don't need anything more. They are finalizing a merger with Zapver Inc. Don't know anything about them, but it really doesn't matter. We're just looking for why the stock was running today. So she gave us 36%. Let's go take a look at that chart real quick. All right, so we're over here at TOS. That's what I'm gonna use for my charting to show all of this to you. TOS is Thinkorswim. It's free. If you don't have a trading platform or just tired of paying for the one you got, just sign up with TD Ameritrade. That's free. You don't even actually have to trade with them. Just download TOS and you can use it too. So we're looking at SGTB at the 20 day, one hour. And what I'm gonna do here, you see we've got some dashes here, right? You got a dash there, a dash there, and it's kind of tough to see. So I'm gonna turn on a special bar that has a few advantages to it. This is the Heike Ashen bar. Uh, this shows not only trend, trend reversal, but it shows you pressure. You see how this is pushing down, pushing down, the bars get smaller and smaller. It gives you an indication that the trend, the direction of the stock is gonna change. So I like to use these. But it's also just easier to read. You can see the flow of the price much easier. So we had a low bubble back here 20 days ago and she took off it was actually two days ago, which is when the news came out, right? Not today, it came out yesterday. So just at the beginning of that day, before the bell, it started to climb and it's been climbing ever since because of the merger. Everything looks strong. We're still pushing up on the one hour. And if you take a quick glance at the five, we got a crossover imminent right there. She's about ready to come out of the red. RSI is pushing apart, just about ready to break to 60. Volume is here at the end of the day, not as strong as the beginning, but she's sitting on the 50, pushing up and away. This could easily get some more gains on Tuesday. With merger news, most likely, but do your DD, you never know. So the next one up is Lee's, L-E-A-S, Finished today at 0059, 38% gains, 13 million shares, had 106 trades. Figure there's at least 50 people, right? At least 50, probably more. Let's take a look at LEAS. She is on the pink limited tier. She finished at just under the 006. What sort of relative volume did Lee's have today? Uh, about twice. She went from about 7 million to well, 13 million, just under double. And their share structure, oh, pretty high. We got about a billion shares over there. And Lisa's income, I don't see any revenue, so they're not making any money. Disclosures, we're looking at the dates here. December of last year was their last financial and haven't had anything else there. So hopefully we have news. Uh, no. News here says 2020. Anything down further? No, nothing. So if I can't find anything, what I'll normally do is just take this ticker and throw it in over here at Twitter. I like to use Twitter. It's like having free employees. They're all doing searches and they all want to share their information and they're poking their heads into all sorts of dark corners and sharing that stuff with me. Now you don't have to take it as gospel, but they're definitely leads and they save you a lot of time. So what do we got here? Lees, holy dollar, dollar, dollar. Our plan for the future of life-saving drugs. Uh, not too sure what that's about. Uh, maybe some acquisition coming. Lees, new website. Beep, yeah, some good news. All right, uh, so something's going on here. Let's see if we can find something a little more clear. Dr. Sincule took previous company to 300 million market cap. That's 30 cents for Lee's current share structure. With the licensing agreement with Life Science Arm of Reliance and tapping into a $16 billion market for the two biosimilars, anything under a penny should be double just based on that. Hmm, so it sounds like they do have some sort of acquisition or licensing deal going on here. And this Dr. Sinku, I'm not quite sure who he, who he is, but he has a reputation for making companies money, right? So that seems to be what's got this going. Mab containing cancer products are from a new, uh, mind blowing new tech, splicing variant of Clotho, world's hope for Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, age related diseases, most trustworthy management, including Dr. Sincule. 
So obviously worth some more D&D. Uh, Lees has got some special drugs with a very accomplished, trustworthy doctor. So that's something to consider. Let's take a look at that chart then. LEAS 20 day, one hour chart. Going sideways, you can see the 200 right there. She was riding it, uh, mostly on top, started to fall. You normally see once they fall under that they'll come up scraping their nails trying to hang on and usually fall. Happens over and over and over again. Once they get off the 200 underneath, there's that last ditch attempt and it is not pretty. She hit a low bubble here and started to rise from that point. That was two days ago and she had a huge jump obviously today on merger speculation took it well over the 200 on the one hour let's come down to that five day she was under the 200 all this time hit that low bubble and it was the catalyst folks there was nothing happening the other day except this same speculation i'm sure but obviously getting into twitter probably helps it move more she launched past that 200 so what do we have today 38% gains and this didn't start the run didn't start until about uh, 1 30 in the afternoon 1 30 in the afternoon she launched so it's not always first thing in the morning and everything still looks very strong here the RSI is flaming well over 70 it's up at 77 right now the MACD is spreading out and climbing fast look at the uh, volume at the end of the day really really strong at the end of the day much more than it was at the beginning of the day so this looks like it has strong potential for tuesday not a guarantee but the technical sure looks strong all right so what have we got next up here 40 we're not gonna well okay we'll look at this one cap c i am familiar with cap c they did 126,000 shares today 40 trades 42% gains, we are going up. Cap C has a new product that they've just gotten out on the market. They call it the Smart Mirror. It's basically got what you see on your computer screen built into the mirror. Obviously it's touch and it's translucent. So you can be like, say, putting on your makeup, looking at the person on the computer screen doing it, but you can see right through it if you adjust your eyes and see yourself in the mirror. And they've got it for tall closet mirrors for exercising and all sorts of stuff. So that's the product that they've got. What was the relative volume today? Eh, 130, actually less, wow. They did less volume today and did 42% gains at 47 cents. What is their share structure? Not bad. We got a 25, 26 million share structure. That's pretty good for Cap C. They do have uh, income coming in. Yep, even the last quarter, they're bringing in $44,000. It's dropped, but at least they're making money, right? Let's see if we have any disclosures here. Looking at the current dates, nothing there, and an 8K, but that was six weeks ago. So let's check the news, see if we have anything going on here. That was in January of this year, and nothing again. So let's take Cap C and take that over to Twitter and see what we can find over there. It's my little cheater board over here. All right, we're gonna go over to top. I like to get the most popular. Wow, February 18th, social media influence where 10 million followers just posted on the smart mirror. Let's go. Okay, uh, who is that? Strategic Investments. Can't wait, Cap C got the future tech guys. Don't want to miss it. So, I was wondering if maybe they had any contracts that came out. Capstone CEO to hold webinar for smart mirror updates. Stay tuned. Oh, that's right. I do believe it's like the 23rd or the 24th. I read that earlier. There it is. Register for Capstone CEO Smart Mirror Update Webinar, February 23rd. So, <laughs> again, we really don't have a catalyst. It's just a speculation. They're going to be bringing out more information here in, uh, well, a few days. And hopefully, they're going to mention some new contracts or something going on with their Smart Mirror. Let's go look at that chart. Sticking to our 20-day, one-hour outlook, we are at CAPC. Okay, she was under her 200, actually had a break here, a nice strong break, broke through every single of her SMAs, but could not hold it. That was her first tap and didn't even try for a second. Fell strong, a little bit of a recovery onto the 50, couldn't even hold that. Hit a low bubble here, K 
came up but continued falling. Looks like she got real close to that low bubble again and jumped again. But she's just meandering really. She's not holding anything. Now you can see the MACD has had a change here. Over the last week it has been fighting to get up to the signal line. Has just hit signal line and is now catching some momentum there. It's getting a strong upsurge. Look at the RSI. Definitely strong. Uh, the volume isn't as strong as it has been before, but it's positive. This was negative. This is all positive. We've got a strong jump there. Let's take a look at the five day, five minute. So she was pretty much just going sideways and the 50 day is where she careened across the top of and started to launch off. Crossed the 200 and picked up momentum when she got a past that the load taken off her back and she hit a high here at the end of the day let's actually look at that one day one minute chart so she ended the day on the high didn't even have a chance to pull back and I expect to pull back 99% of the time not a fall just a pull back kind of like a fake hot touch oh 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 no it's not hot right so then you get back to it but we didn't have that everything is strong RSI shooting up MACD is shooting up it looks good the volume is very light but that light volume pushed the price up so she actually looks good just on the speculation of what the CEO was going to say on the 23rd so the next one up the food chain is MXMG with 183 trades. That's a ton of trades. That's at least 100 people, don't you think? 6.6 .6 million shares, 44% gains. Sounds good to me. Let's see what we can learn about her. What was her relative volume today? Explosive gigantic wow we're going from 10,000 shares a day 10,000 to 6.6 .6 million folks that's over 600 times her normal volume that is incredible wow you've got to pay attention to this over 100 people 600 times her normal volume let's hope she has a small share count she does actually 43 million no don't get spoiled 43 million is a very good share count are they making any money no not annually how about quarterly no they got nothing coming in and their disclosures anything current that can give us a heads up to why she's running no not for a couple years and her disclosures are just current so let's take a look at that news <clears throat> got nothing here so you know what we're gonna do we're gonna go over to Twitter there and get some information. All right, what do we got here? The same filing that showed a merger shows the massive split. Oh, okay, so people are excited about the merger, but nobody's noticed the split. Let's see what they say down here. So we got a merger going on. We'll probably get some more information further down about that. What do they got here? Each 1,000 shares of common stock shall automatically be converted into one share. So we got a 1 and 1,000 reverse split. Folks, that's not very nice. That isn't something that most people will buy into a stock on. Let's see if we can see anything else here that puts a little bit of light on what's going on. Uh, MXMG $2 billion Euro merger dedicated to the pursuit of excellent. Uh, they seem to think there's a merger going on with, I don't know who this is, Sonarco. Oh, you know, I did see something here about Sonarco. This is the reason I think they believe this is a reverse merger. There is no news about it. There's nothing to be seen. But I noticed this when I was reading the annual report. If you come over into their report, this is all the information about the company. They use this address here in Luxembourg which is different than on OTC markets but here contact Sonarco Life right there that's at the very top of this company's disclosure normally when you see an address is different it belongs to a different company like over here if we come over to the company profile this address here a lot of times I'll put the address into the search engine and see if anybody else is using that address and a lot of times I'll see two companies on the OTC market each using it normally what happens is they end up merging together yeah so we've got a different 
address, and we've got a different corporate name, Sinarco. So people believe there's going to be a reverse merger, and we just saw that document, and there's going to be a reverse split which is not good news, one in 1,000. So if you own 10,000 shares, you're gonna end up with 10 shares when they do the reverse split. Well, that's what you get on a 20-day, one-hour chart for MXMG. She was only doing 10,000 shares a day. And let me see, her price, look, she's at double zero four. It doesn't take much to buy 10,000 shares. That's probably one trade, two trades if you're lucky. That is nothing. And it wasn't until today she had a huge jump. And I mean, she went from 0045 up to 22. You can kind of think of this as from 45 to 222 if that makes it easier to judge. So you've got about a 500% gain here, though after it all fell away and maybe <laughs> maybe somebody tweeting about the reverse split brought it back to their senses that 500 percent fell all the way down to 44 percent i think she was lucky to get that yeah the merger news is probably good but that reverse split takes all your potential away you're not going to make a lot of money if your 10,000 shares becomes 10 shares you're just going to be upset so let's go take a look at another one maybe it's got better things going for it all right, going up to the next one up above us, that would be 165 trades, 72 million shares, 51% gains. This is SSOF. Can we hear a round of applause for SSOF? This is 66 oil fields. Their relative volume today, about 12 times as much. Definitely something to consider, 12 times as much. Oh, share structure not so good we got about 600 million shares they don't seem to be making any money nope nothing there and disclosures we've got nothing since november of last year so there's no catalyst here and news is even older 2019 so no catalyst here so let's run over to twitter see what they can tell us about this stock saves me a lot of headaches going to google and searching through years of news all right let me see end of day report uh 60 million volume yeah i see a lot of technicals 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 uh, what's this no wait a minute i uh, love to see zero debt on these tickers okay what's this about well their last filing was back in november so you're looking at zero debt on last quarter which there's nothing wrong with but that's not a catalyst for today by any means um sos love the share count i don't see any news here uh who in the right mind would pump ssof at this point get real there's no current pump happening on ssof oh okay the movement is based on the quarterly report showing zero debt which has been known but new report confirms still the same i didn't see any new report and it is I mean, if that, that's it, that's all there is. So it wants to run now? Well, there's no rhyme or reason sometimes why a stock moves. So this is SSOF, but I'm looking at the six-month, four-hour chart. I was curious to see where that quarterly report was on the chart, the last one that they're talking about. Well, that's right here. So we had a high here of just over two cents, and this is about 900% down. We're at double zero two, not single zero two. She took a heavy fall here, got that quarterly report that says no debt. There was a bounce. I mean, I'm not going to say it was itty bitty. That's probably a 100% bounce there, believe it or not. Sure it is. Let's see. If it started uh, down here at double zero three and went up to double zero five, yeah, you're looking at about 90% jump. 90% jump on that. But it wasn't until here, you could see that volume is real strong. Today's volume was really super duper strong. Coming in on the 20 day, running downhill, constant, hit a low bubble here, bounced up, paid no mind to it, continued falling on the 200 hole here, which is like the 200 SMA, but it takes current affairs more into account. And then we had today's jump. And she's giving away about 50% of it. You know, you can see she jumped from here to there and she's landed in the middle, which that, that's a good sign. 
we're okay with her keeping 50% of her gains. So she took those gains early in the morning, finished here at, oh boy, that's about noon. So she climbed for three hours in the day, started down here at uh, about a pen, no, 0 0.0016, went all the way up here to 0 0.0033. So you're looking at just under 100% gains and then fell back to 51%. So right, she lost about 50%, kept all of that, even while the MACD was falling and the RSI was planted, she found her line above the 50% mark and below it. 50% of the total gains that she did from start to finish. She is coming down, tapping on that 50. Looks like she could continue on. But market sentiment has a lot to say about what happens to stocks. Even good stocks are getting beat down. So what have we got up here now? Moving up. 12, 14, 17, 31, 66 for OBMP. Finished at $1.10, 80% gains, only 42,000 shares. Now, honestly, yeah, it's nice to see millions and millions of shares. That's great. But I got to tell you what, I get more excited when I start seeing 100,000 shares because it's a low number that's starting to get big. So I could be in on it early before it hits its million shares. So that can be a good sign. So OBMP with 80% gains today. Let's see what we're looking at here. All right, uh, Pink Current. Let's see what her relative volume was. Uh, not bad. About 15 times her normal volume. That's good. That strong volume there. Oh my goodness. Ho, 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 ho. Look at this, folks. We have under a million shares in the float. 754,000 shares. Something's happened here. Something's happened here. Six, 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 seven. There, there must have been some split here recently. Let's see if we come down here by splits. Uh, back in 2019, I see they had one, but that could be it. That, that's like dividing and ending on a three. That's how you end up with this. But in either case, we've got under a million shares in the float. Oh my goodness. 80% on uh, how many shares moved today was it? I got to look again, folks. Got to look again. 42,000 shares moved. That's it. 42,000 shares moved, but she only has 750,000 shares. So when she moves 1 million shares, she has sold all that she has plus some. That's rolling it over. That's when more shares are needed, but they're not there. That becomes supply and demand. And that's when you get these stocks to run at very high prices because there's just not enough people selling them. There's not enough shares for as many people who want them. So if this ever starts to get some good volume, boy, this can really, really run. All right, let's take a look over at the financials, see if they're making any money. Hey, they are making money. There's a half a million dollars. I know that because they tell me to put three zeros behind it. Half a million dollars annually and about $90,000 on their last quarter. So that's all good. Let's see about their disclosures. Uh, that's QB, 10Q today. Today they had a 10Q come out. They had a quarterly report come out. Must have been something good. I'm not gonna jump into it. No, too much information and I wouldn't know where to look. Honestly, if you wanted to do DD on this stock, forget Google. Oh, the heck with reading all the news. No, just go to their 10Q right there and it will have every single bit of information that matters in there. That's the whole point to a quarterly and annual report. It will tell you where they've spent all their money, how they make all their money, how much they pay out. Now, that scares a lot of people, the accounting. I get that, it can look confusing, but forget the numbers. If you look at the rest of it, there's a lot of just paragraphs that will tell you how much money they've made, how much they've spent, but forget that. That's important stuff, but you can also get their history. Their entire dossier from the day they were created in what state, how they got into this condition, that condition, changed their name, bought this company, merged with that company, it's all there. Everything. Why waste your time searching for everything when everything is on one 
page. So we're going to go take a look over at Twitter because I'm going to hope that somebody's already nitpicked this thing and they found what's important and they'll just put it on the table for us and make our job easy. All right. What's this? OBMP, 5.6 billion shares reduction. Whoa. Well, this may... Uh, did this just happen? Did they just have a split? Is this how they got down to this crazy low float? Are, are, are we catching this on time? What is this? Pink current, 6.7 million, right? One point, well, transfer agent is now verified. Transfer agent's good. We want that. We weren't paying attention to it this time. Uh, my goodness. OBMP 10Q Theralink. Theralink. Come on, people, get more clear here. So obviously, you can see there's a lot of 10Q information people are talking about here, but they're not getting real specific. Theralink Technologies, Inc. Are, are, are they changing their name? See, now what you could do is just take this word. We're not going to go do it now. Copy it and go do a search. Just open that 10Q up, put this in as a search, and see where it shows up. And we may find, who said that? Who? Fine then, I will go do it. It's just that easy. We're, we're gonna copy this here, copy that, right? We're gonna come over here, open up that last 10 Q. I'm gonna do my search up here, throw that in, and it shows up 52 times. Well, look at that. Well, I guess they've already changed their name or something. So, we need to do some DD. This is now Theralink Technologies, though they've been calling themselves, I don't know how to pronounce that, Onk Biomune, Onk, <laughs> whatever they were, they're not there anymore. Theralink Technologies, whatever that's worth to you. So we're back to that 20 day, one hour view for OBMP. And she was going sideways here, took a big drop, big drop came up. Now remember, we're on the one hour. So it fell all the way down from a dollar four down to 50 cents. And in one hour, came back up to a dollar. So there was a 100% gain right there. You can see another one happened here. She fell even further, but she came right back up. This is something to pay attention to. Her big drops don't stay. She always bounces back, but they may be so quick that if you're not paying attention, you just miss them anyways. So we had another big drop here, and that bounced off. This time we've gotten above the 50 after what? One, two, three, four, five, seven days maybe? We've been below the 50. Now she's starting to come up, and it looks strong. We see a strong MACD, RSI, could be a little bit stronger. Let's come in on that five day, five minute look. All right, she is, the 20 day, I don't see, okay, her 50 is just starting here. We're just starting to get enough volume. <laughs> Remember, she's only doing 50,000 shares on a good day, on a good day. So we were down here at 61 cents and it's now up here at $1.10. That was one day ago, one day ago, and that, it's just repeating itself, folks. It's another low bubble. Every time she hits a low, she comes up about 100%. So if you want to make a quick 100%, put this on your watch list, OBMP. Every time she drops deep, she comes back quick. This is on five minutes. We're on five minutes and it's making these big bounces back. That's 61 cents up to $1.08. This is 73 cents up to $1.18. That's a 50 cent jump. So you like jumps? This, this one has a very small share count and it seems to be proving that that matters. So next low bounce, you could make yourself a quick buck. So as far as 50 trades go, that's it. The list stops right there, and if you look over in our trades column here, there is nothing but ones, twos, threes, fours. We do, and you can see that's where we're at, 80%. And right there is the first 100%, right? And if you look at the top of the list, right there it is. We can almost fit the whole thing on one page, right there. And these don't count because they're experts. So this, 
That is the only stocks out of the entire OTC market of 12,000 securities that got over 100%. That's it. Pretty bleak. And you can see one trade, three trades, one, one, two. You got 133 and 110, and that's it. So that 33 stands out. And when you look over here and see 348% gains, it really stands out. And I have no problem looking at a 33 trade. That's, that's more than a couple people. You only need 10, 12, 15 people to really get a stock moving. But you get more than that, you can get some serious trade action. Now, what I also like is the share count. They did 676,000 shares today. That's not a million yet. And it's not a little itty bitty number like 50,000. So it's in that growth area pushing to the millions and above. So this has really got my attention. NLRCF. Let's take a look at this stock. So just out of curiosity, what is the company about? Uh, Secret Pass Gold Project located in Arizona. Elko, so they're into mining. They're mining companies. Okay. So we know what they're doing. 348%. Gold, okay. <laughs> what is their volume today? About 20%, no, 20 times more than normal. 33,000 shares to 676,000 shares. And their share count. All right, normally I would go to the unrestricted shares. That would tell me, but there's nothing here. Float. I don't know why, but it seems to always be outdated. This is almost a year old, but they tell us it's 85 million shares. And with 115 million in the outstanding, I'm going to figure that's probably what it is. Are they making any revenues with this mine? Nothing annually, nothing quarterly. So we got nothing here. And are there any disclosures? Are they make any acquisitions? No. So what has got this stock jumping? All right, the last piece of news was today the 18th trading halt pending material news. Okay, the company announces trading of the company shares has been halted at 10.48 p.m. P.m. I wonder if that's supposed to be a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, which would make it uh, Eastern Standard Time. You add three hours, that would be 11, 2 in the morning or 2 in the afternoon if it was an accident. Uh, let me see. This morning, this morning, at the request of the Northern Lights, pending material news to be issued prior to the resumption of trading. So they're going to halt the trading, and then they're going to give news, give everybody a chance to hear it equally, because it could be good news, and you may want to buy more. And believe it or not, they'll do this for bad news too. If things really went bad, you don't want to get trapped. So this gives everyone a fair chance to get out. So. They then put the news out there, give everyone a fair chance, like 10, 15 minutes, and then they start it back up. Could be a little longer, but it's not a day. It's not days. Not normally. Could be, though, but not normally. And then they start to trade the stock again. Well, I'm going to tell you already. I've looked at the chart, and it traded big today, right? 348% gains. But there is no news afterwards. You don't see any here, right? And you can take my word for it. I went over to Twitter. As you can see, it's still over there. I went over to Twitter and I went through every single one all the way down until it ran out. I'm not lying. There was not one piece of news here that came after the trading halt. That's up multiple times, but that's it. So I did do a Google search. There is no articles. There is no news. There are no new filings. There's nothing. But the stock started trading. All right, let's go take a look at that. So that's a five minute, five day chart for NLRCF. Now, they say 10 o'clock yesterday, which would have been two o'clock in, in the Eastern Standard Time. Well, the stock isn't trading, so I don't know the point why you'd stop a stock trading. So you figure it's an accident, right? Well, this red here is at 10 in the morning, and over here is. That's two. Well, it's trading. That's all I can say. It's trading in the morning, it's trading in the afternoon, and it's trading like crazy. What happened? What happened to the halt? Where did the news go? And what made it climb? I'm a little befuddled here, folks. Honestly, don't know what's going on, but the technicals look great. The technicals look great. We hit a low bubble here. She jumped up a wee little bit, 
And then today she just decided to go. I mean, if they, if I didn't see any news whatsoever, I would just say it was the low bubble. That's all I'd say. The company has value. People know it. They've done their research and ta-da, it's climbing. And maybe that is the case because I can't find any news, no catalyst. And they said that it was going to stop trading at 10 at night or 10 in the morning or two in the afternoon. In any case, it never stopped. I don't see it stopped. Now, maybe it stopped here at 10 in the morning. Maybe it was 10 in the morning. Well, no, because the news came out today. So, <laughs> I'm at a loss. I'm really at a loss. All I know is when I break this down to a minute, we're at five minutes right now. That is beautiful, right? That is lovely. And look, folks, that little bit of volume, the small, well, almost the smallest volume of the day pushed it the biggest jump of the day, the most increase there. We had the hugest jump of volume, but a small bar. It's always nice to see a small volume and a big bar. That tells you there's some serious interest, not just interest. So when we come down to the minute, that happened the last minute. At the bell, it's, you know, there's a crowd running at the door and psh, they shut the door and the crowd's trying to get in. So when the bell goes off Tuesday morning, is that crowd gonna continue rushing in? That's what the charts say. So this looks like it's gonna continue running. Why though? Why did it start running? Why should it continue running? Well, I'm gonna say the low bubble, but there's something else going on here. They stopped trading and it doesn't look like it stopped. They said they had news, but I don't see the news. And this is acting like it's had news, but I can't find the news it would be responding to. So it's a curious little monkey. I would keep my eyes on this on Tuesday, NLRCF. God only knows what it's gonna do, but it could do it again, whatever it is. So now you've been made privy to one of my favorite searches. That's how I find most of my stocks. Honestly, I go to the OTC markets and I look in the trade column. I look for the crowd factor. That to me is how the price moves. The more people around it, the more price action we're going to get. The best news, the wildest catalyst isn't going to do anything if you don't have people there acting on it. So I am constantly looking for that, especially first thing in the day. Now in saying that, the OTC market information is free, but it is got a 15 minute delay on it. So when the bell goes off, you're going to have to wait till 945 to get any information. But watch it. Watch it from 945 to say 1045, that hour in there. Look for the stocks that are getting the most trades early. Chances are they're going to keep getting the most trades through the day and probably the biggest gains. So that's my secret for finding stocks that are running fast, the crowd factor. Remember folks, DD is treasure hunt. It's fun. The more you know, <laughs> the more you're going to grow. See you folks.